Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. You know, I get a ton of requests to do different things in Luminar, but the curious thing is my Luminar videos don't really get a lot of views. So the number of requests I get don't really correspond to the actual number of views my Luminar videos garner. That's probably because my titles aren't good enough or my keywording isn't right. Something is wrong and YouTube's algorithm really isn't showing my Luminar videos when people search for Luminar on YouTube. So I was hoping you could do me a favor. If you like my Luminar videos, please share them to social media. Please hit the like button. Uh, please share them with anyone you think would benefit from them. If you belong to a camera club, share them with the other members. I would really appreciate it. Now, as far as requests go, I found they come kind of in groups, meaning I'll get a spate of the same type of requests all at once, and then that will cool down and I'll get another different request from a lot of different people all at once. And lately, I've been getting a lot of requests to do textures in Luminar. Now, I must confess, I'm not really a texture person, and it's been my experience. You either love textures or you hate textures, and I'm not really one that does a lot with textures, although I do know how to use them and I'm happy to show you how to use them in Luminar. Now, when you want to apply a texture in Luminar, you go to the texture panel. It's in the creative tab over here. So click on creative and you can see textures overlay. Open that. Now, two things. First of all, there are no built-in textures in Luminar 4, so you have to have your own textures, at least of the making of this video. I suspect down the line they're going to add textures to Luminar, but at least right now there's no built-in ones, so you have to have your own. Second, I found the textures work best on images that have a homogenous background. As a matter of fact, if the background is uniform gray, the textures usually work best on something like that. If you can't have a uniform gray black background. As long as it's uniform in color, you should be good to go. Also, I found you'd like to use a texture that is similar in color to that homogenous color that is taking up most of the image. So in the case of this, we have this kind of earth tone color in the background, and earth tone texture works best. If you had like, you know, a pastel -y blue uh, color, then something in the blues or cool colors would work best. With something like that. So I have some textures of my own. I don't sell them or anything, but these are textures that I've created, uh, you know, for whatever reason. So I'm going to go to low texture and I have one that I cleverly lit named number 20 and I'm going to use that. I'm going to click open and you'll, you'll see that it just kind of lays the texture right on the image and it will fit it to the image. You can see there's a little checkbox here to keep the aspect ratio. Um, if your texture is a considerably different size than your image, you want to make sure that's checked so that it will just fit the image perfectly. You also then could use these, um, these uh, boxes here to move the texture about a little bit to center it horizontally, center it vertically as needed. Uh, just to get different, maybe there's different uh, things in the texture that you want to make sure they're seen or you want them in a specific place in the image. Now, most often you don't just lay the texture down. You're going to blend the texture with the original image. And that's where this blend mode drop down comes down to. Now, this is where it gets artistic. This is really up to your artistic vision of the image. You'll see that the blend modes will really make a difference. For example, at normal, you see what it is. But as soon as I go to darken, it's considerably different. Multiply, color burn, lighten, screen. Overlay and soft light, I found, for me at least, are the, if I'm going to do a texture, those are probably the ones I prefer the most because in the case of at least this image, they have little effect, especially soft light on the eagle, but they seem to affect the background considerably. Uh, then you have hard light. Then you have some that you probably wouldn't use like difference, subtract. Then you have some you might use hue, color, luminosity. But in this case here, let's go with overlay uh, because soft light isn't affecting the eagle as much, but I want to go with overlay because I want to demo some more things 
where you could see it on the Eagle. Now, once you've chosen the blend mode, you have six sliders where you could really affect the texture some more. For example, opacity. If I move opacity all the way to the left, it's as though the texture isn't there anymore, but the blending is, as you could see. If I move opacity to the right, we're bringing out more of the texture. So you can see the texture's coming through stronger. Now, zoom, the texture is kind of fitted now to our eagle uh, image. But if I like take zoom to the left, you could see we're shrinking it down. If I take zoom to the right, we could push it up. Now you may want to do this because there may be something in the texture, like over here we have this kind of stain on the paper. Um, maybe I want that to show. And by default, it was mostly behind the bird. So I could push it out a little bit like that. Now brightness, it actually now is affecting the texture, but because the texture is blended with the image and laying on top of the image, it's going to brighten the whole thing, right? So we'll move that to the right, could brighten it or make it darker. Contrast, again, it's affecting the texture, but because it's blended and laying on top of the image, it does everything. Uh, I mean, it affects everything. Saturation, we could increase saturation or decrease saturation. You're not going to bring it right to black and white, as you can see, but with the blend mode especially. And hue, uh, let's say we bring it way up for a second. You could change the hue of the texture, and this could help you better match the uh, colors that are dominant in the original image. So we'll reset you by double clicking on it. I'll reset saturation by double clicking on that as well. I'll reset contrast, reset brightness. I think um, I want to bring opacity out a little more, like maybe like that. And, and that looks okay. All right. Now, the next thing you want to consider is do you really want the texture? to blend with the subject in the frame. In this case, of course, the subject is the American Eagle. Do I want that texture blending with that Eagle? Sometimes you might, sometimes you might not. If you don't, what you're usually going to use is the brush. You would go to Edit Mask and you would pick the brush. Now what you most often want to do probably is take opacity down uh, considerably, like to 20%, and you're going to want to erase the texture. So make sure you click on it, Erase right here. And now every brush stroke will be worth 20% of a full brush stroke. And you could cumulatively add your brush strokes. So if you brush twice, it's kind of worth 40%. Now it's not exactly linear, but let's for the sake of argument say it is, it's going to be like 40% of a full brush stroke. And what many people who use textures like to do is they like to um, feather it. So they're going to have more brush strokes in the middle of the subject. And as they go towards the outside of the subject, they have less brush strokes so that it is feathered out. So it comes in to maybe in the middle of this eagle, there's no texture at all. But as it goes out, we start getting more and more texture until we're on the background. It's a hundred percent. Now, so you could come in like this, like come in like that, two brush strokes. And then we have a heavily, heavily feathered brush as well. So its softness is at 100. So you could come in. And if it helps, you could turn on the mask. You could just click on the little eyeball there. And you could see now where it's really dark red. That's 100% right there. And you could see how I took some of it away in there. So you could come in again like that. And you want to feather it like, like this maybe. So it's, then maybe take a saw, or I'm sorry, take a opacity down even more. If that helps, kind of help feather it better. So you could really fade it, fade it out. Like that. And then we'll turn the overlay off by clicking on that little eyeball again. So you get an idea now of the texture and like that. And, you know, it's like I said, it's textures aren't for everyone. A lot of people love them. A lot of people hate them. Um, I'm a little more ambivalent. I appreciate an image 
that uses a texture in a very artful way. I really do like it. I enjoy those images. For me, I don't care for them as much. It's not so much my style, so I don't use them as much. But I encourage you to utilize them if you really do like them. Just keep in mind, the background especially, make sure it's homogenous. If it's gray, that's great because the texture will lay down really nice on a gray background. If it's not gray, try to choose a texture that is similar in color to that background. And then uh, experiment with the different blend modes. And then make sure when you use the brush that you take the opacity of the brush way down and make sure that you're painting out the brush and then you'll be good to go. So that's textures in Luminar 4. Thank you everyone that suggested this uh, video. I really do appreciate your suggestions. If you have any ideas on videos you'd like me to do in Luminar, leave them in the comments below. Thank you. I'll talk to you guys soon.